I'm Kay with CrateInsider.com and today we are actually at the facilities of Butler Built and I'm really excited that we are now, we've now become a Butler Built dealer and I'm here with racer Chris Ferguson and Chris, tell us, just give us a little overview of, of seats and some things that we need to know. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, the most important part when it comes to any kind of seat is making sure the driver actually fits. Uh, that's the most important part when it comes to safety and also when it comes to uh, being comfortable in any kind of race car. So uh, a lot of people know that uh, as racers, sometimes we don't pay attention to that as much as we should. Uh, a lot of us has probably jumped on cushions and uh, made do with what we have. But when it comes to safety and uh, the approach that we take, we want to make sure the driver fits 100% in the seat. And uh, not just that, we just want to make sure that they're comfortable. And uh, when it comes to that, that's the biggest thing. Great. So that first measurement, tell us a little bit about your measurement or like what's the first decision we need to make when it comes to like seat sizing? Well, definitely uh, go online to uh, butlerbuilt.net and there's an actual seat measurement guide that we take seven measurements. Uh, the seven measurements basically determine everything that's on the seat if it'll fit the actual driver. Um, one of the main measurements is the hip measurement. We measure right across your hip to see how wide your actual base that you're going to sit in the seat. Uh, with the Easy Sportsman series, we have 15 inch, 16 inch, 17 inch, and 18 inch. And all of those actually uh, can be determined by just that measurement. Um, but we also like to check other things like the, uh, like the seat belt height. Uh, naturally, whenever you're mounting a set of seat belts, uh, making sure those are level and also the seat belt hole is level with the uh, top of your shoulder is extremely important when it comes to safety and comfort. And then the other things that we need to look for are the rib height, which are located right here. Naturally, as a driver myself, I know that I've sat in a seat before that wasn't right. And when the rib heights are a little bit high on you, they'll actually rub the inside of your arm, which is not fun when you're racing. Um, so naturally, that's one of the other measurements that we have on there. Also, the chest depth, which is uh, extremely important because if your chest depth is too short or too long, your chest will actually come out farther past than where the rib supports are, which is never good when it comes to safety. And we also don't want them too long because if they're too long, then there's a more than likely chance you're not going to be comfortable. And then um, last, the, the, one of the other main ones is uh, the sight line measurement, which is uh, step number six. And as you know, vision is important as anything else. So that measurement determines how high the headrest has to be on the seat. And um, when we get that measurement, we're able to tell you which seat will work with your sight line also. So it's not just a combination. There's not just one measurement. It's a combination of all seven of them. And that's the only, the only way that we can confidently tell you which seat that you'll fit in. So, so Chris, let's go ahead and take some of this and, and I'd love to see some examples. So let's go ahead and bring Alex in and Alex, come on into the shot here and we'll take a look and tell me about what we're really looking for in these, in these, in these measurements. Well, if the first thing that you want to be able to kind of tell is, did you see the way he had to spin into the seat? Oh, a little bit. So, you know, when we, the first thing that we look for when we get in the seat is to make sure the driver just doesn't sit directly back into the seat like it's a recliner. Because anytime that happens, that's not going to be safe when they get in a wreck because just as easy as they can slip in, they can slip out. So naturally, the first thing is we like the, the ribs to actually curl around the driver. That way, when they do get in a wreck, it actually holds them inside of the seat. That's one of the most important things. And uh, naturally, a lot of drivers, when they're like, oh, I can't get in this thing. And I'm like, no, when you get back in it, you're right. But see, it's, you want to be able to turn a little bit. That way, we see that the ribs are actually curled in around them. And... Uh, but after that, the first step that we kind of look for is, you know, step number one, the hips. And on him, as you can tell, like down here in the hip area, he's got, you know, just a little bit of room, um, maybe, maybe a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch. But that's a good thing because his seat belts will actually be able to go through the seat belt holes and sit comfortably on his lap. Um, and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times, you know, he can actually probably fit in a 15, but he wouldn't be comfortable. So... As long as there's not an inch on each side of his hips right here, it's safe where it's at. So, but in a 15, you, your hips probably would have been, you know, pushed all the way out to the edge. It wouldn't have been as comfortable. You probably would have been wedged in there, which as you know, maybe it might be safe, but it, it's not very comfortable. Um, that's the first thing that we look for. The other thing is we like to check and make sure that the thighs are pretty level. And if not level, a little bit lower than the leg supports. Uh, reason being, 
on that is just because anytime he does get in a wreck, left or right, um, the worst case scenario is his leg goes over the leg support. And with him, actually, his legs are probably about an inch down on these, um, which is really good because it's going to contain his legs when he does get in a wreck. Um, the next thing that I would probably look look forward, which was, you know, I'm just going to work from going down to coming up, is the rib supports. If you look at these rib supports on him, they're actually not all the way up in his armpit, which is nice because if we do get it all the way up in his armpit, that's going to rub on the inside of his arm, and it's going to make him extremely uncomfortable when it, whenever he races. So, but the good thing about the rib support is that's the actual part of the seat that holds the driver in place, and it helps out a ton in long races. A lot of people don't utilize rib supports like we do, but we do believe that it does make a difference. Um, next thing is checking the depth. So the depth on this one's a little bit long on him. It's not very long. It's only about a, maybe an inch at the most, a half inch. Um, so what we'll do is we'll actually probably curl these slightly and we're just a little bit more to kind of get rid of that depth. Um, you know, naturally in a perfect world, they would be almost level with where his chest would be in his upper stomach, but he's really right, really so close that it's not that big of a difference. So, um, you know, that, that in itself, you know, that shows that he fits in a stock 16 like he's supposed to. Um, now, working up, looking at the shoulder supports, naturally you lean on these a lot when you race. So my rule of thumb is, and it's all driver preference on the shoulder supports because some guys like whenever the shoulder supports touch their shoulder and some people hate it. So naturally, like we can ask Alex, I mean, what do you, how do you feel about them? Oh, I'm, I'm liking these so far. Cool. So like, like my rule of thumb is I like to be able to kind of almost fit my hand width in there. And which if you look on this with Alex, his is almost there. So his, and actually like what I try to tell people is hold your hands up like you're in a steering position and now see how I can almost fit my hands width down in there? That's what you like. Now when you go, you know, naturally some guys have broader shoulders, so the broader shoulders, you know, they might actually be up against it. Some guys like that and some guys don't. We also make a thinner shoulder foam and we also make a thicker one so we can adjust all that too also. And then um, the next thing, which is probably one of the most important things that we look for when we're measuring up somebody for a seat is the actual seat belt holes for the shoulder belt, for the shoulder belts. So if you look at these, they're actually dead perfect with the top of his shoulders right now. They're literally, if we ran a seat belt right through there, they would be at zero degrees, which is perfect. And naturally, he's gonna have some kind of head and neck restraint, but with the adjustability in these easy seats, if it comes up a half inch or one inch, he's still gonna be dead perfect. So that's one of the most important things. If your seat belt holes are two inches too high, or two inches too low, it is not safe. It's worst case scenario when it comes to seating, to Hans, to any kind of cat catastrophe that can happen in a race car. So naturally, the first thing we look for when it comes to the shoulder belt holes is making sure they're level with the tops of his shoulders. And then the last thing that we look for is this sight line. And now with Alex here, he's actually pretty close in this seat. Um, but in my opinion, when we look for the sight line measurement, we like to look right at your, basically your cheekbone or your temple right here, right where you can see with your peripherals. So you can still see over it, but you do see that brace. And the reason why we use that measurement and that, that part of your, uh, your face is because that's the center line of your head. And anytime that you get in any kind of wreck, when we have this actual head support brace on right here, we wanted to hit the dead center, that way your head doesn't go over top of it, or if it's too high, we don't want this, we don't want your head to go under it. And just looking at race cars and being around races all the time, I actually do see head supports that aren't in the right location. And this is one of the main things when it comes to safety. If this headrest was up here, you know, basically where his forehead is and he was looking under the race, that would be worst case scenario. And the same thing, if, the, if this head support was down here by his chin or his neck, that would be worst case scenario too, because anytime he gets in any kind of wreck, that head support's not gonna be in the right location and his head's liable of going over or going under and it not working correctly. Um, with Alex here, I would actually suggest maybe 
with the Easy Series seats, we make them adjustable, one inch high and one inch low. He looks to be about one inch low. The headrest is actually one inch low, so I would probably suggest the one inch higher on him, and it would get him closer to where that that cheekbone is, right where he would be able to come up, and he can still see with his peripherals, but it's going to be closer to the center line of his head, which in turn makes it a lot safer. And um, and then, you know, there's a bunch of other things that we like to check, but uh, we, you know, we like having the driver here to look and, but if you can't, as long as you do those seven measurements on the website, I'm not going to say every single time, but nine times out of 10, we, we know what to do and we know what to look for. Well, that's fantastic. You've given us some great information too. I really feel like a racer could, could take like all, everything we just evaluated and sitting in your current seat and really examine it from from all of those measurements or not necessarily measurements but all of those standards that you were giving you know are you know where is your headrest lying and and how are your thighs measuring up and and mom bet there's a, probably a lot of guys out there that are in a seat that they didn't even realize it wasn't as safe as they would like it to be yeah and it happens more times than none because just like everybody knows there's a lot of used parts there's a lot of good deals going around and uh, a lot of people will see a you know, a, a really good looking butler built seat that somebody has online for sale and, you know, they think they're close in it, but they don't know what to look for. So they'll go buy a seat and sure enough, it, it's an, it is a safe seat. It's a nice, nice seat, but it might not be safe for them because they're not sitting in it properly. Well, and then now if someone is going to replace their seat or just get a new one, or maybe they've just got a new car, what you have different uh, price points, you have different styles available. So tell us a little bit about what is available from Butler Built. Um, the biggest thing is, you know, depending on what you race, whether it's a dirt late model, dirt modified, um, let's just say street stock, any four cylinder stock, four modified, four uh, front wheel drive, typically the Easy Sportsman series will work in it. And the biggest thing is with these. I've been here for about five years and I've never seen them not fit in a car. So knock on wood, I know I need to knock on wood, but uh, I've yet to find a car that it didn't fit in. So these seats, the Easy Series, the Easy Sportsman Series work generically for about everything that you can think of that races at a short track. Uh, whether it's, like I said, anything dirt or asphalt. The 20 degree layback works out good in those cars. And with these, we actually make you know, four standard sizes, the 15 inch, 16 inch, 17 and 18. Um, and then moving on up, we actually make about three or four different other styles. If you don't fit in a stock easy seat, or if you need to have it adjusted, we can also adjust the headrest down or up one inch. We can move the rib supports in and out. Um, we also have another option, the Pro Sportsman Plus that we can build custom, which is a seat that roughly costs right around 900 bucks, which is not much higher than the easy seat, but if you don't fit in an easy seat, it's better to not make it work. It's better to just go ahead and buy a custom one because the price ain't much different and we'll make sure that it's 100%, you know, 100% right. And then also we have the Pro Light Series, which has uh, been a really good seat for um, a lot of drivers that race around here. I mean, I know dirt guys, dirt mods, dirt late model guys, the Pro Lights roughly right around 1500 bucks. It's uh, 1529 for a custom and 1479. Mm -hmm. At the very top, we have the SFI 392 Pro Light slide job, which we build in accordance with all the new World of Outlaw, Lucas Oil, and UMP rules. That seat's probably the best of the best that we make when it comes to dirt track racing. Um, those seats will actually work in a modified. I've seen them work in a dirt late model. I've actually sold a guy to a, sold one to a guy that races at Lancaster in a street stock. Um, so he loved the way it filled, and he said he didn't care what it cost, so he took one out the door. And those seats are roughly right around 1,900 bucks. We build them in stock sizes, just like the Pro Sportsman, the Easy Series Sportsman. We build them in 15, 16, 17, and 18. But if you don't fit in those, we build a custom on that too. And um, I guess that's about all the sizes that we make for the dirt stuff.
that's fantastic. And of course, you'll find these, these seats available on CrateInsider.com. If you have any questions, you're certainly welcome to contact us. We'll have the measurement guide. Of course, there'll be a link wherever, pretty much wherever you're watching this video, we'll have a link to somewhere where there'll be a link to the, to the measurement guide. And, and we'll be, be carrying these at CrateInsider.com. Thank you so much, Chris. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in another video. If you like what we're doing here, hit that subscribe button.